This video is sponsored by LastPass. Stop getting locked out of your accounts and let LastPass fill in your username and passwords for you. I've been using this forever now and I love how it relieves the burden of remembering my passwords. LastPass autofills your credentials on mobile sites and apps for iOS and Android. So once you open up an app or site, LastPass will fill in your username and password, making it fast and easy to log in. You get unlimited password storage and free cross-device sync. Click the link below to find out more. Thanks again to LastPass for sponsoring this part of the video. Now on to the build. So guys, I've been busy building PCs and setups for my subscribers and my friends and even recently gave away the original Big Red to an Instagram follower. I've actually used that PC for the longest time on the channel and that was my first ever custom PC I built for myself and I was very happy with it. So before I gave it to uh, an Instagram follower, I actually gave it to my brother and then I built myself this, Big Red version two. But you know what guys, it's been a while since I've treated myself and I think it's finally time that I upgrade my very own PC. Truth be told, I was not happy with this build at all. It was rushed and it did not come out the way I expected it to be. It came out pretty bad. For starters, the case is really bad for airflow and the bends are garbage. It looks like a third grader did it. And on top of all that, the fans stopped working. The RGB lighting on the bottom three fans are completely out and the lighting from the other fans and even the RGB strips cannot be changed. I reinstalled the software and even reconnected the cables and nothing. I can't even control the speed of the fan. So there's something wrong with the Commander Pro or the fans itself. It's also pretty loud for a water-cooled build. The pump noise gets really annoying and you can even hear the liquid going through the flow meter. Let me turn this on and show you guys. But yeah, long story short, it was a big disappointment in myself. You know, I talk pretty big when it comes to being a perfectionist and then I build something like this. Even the flow direction is incorrect on here. The inlet of the top GPU is going into the inlet of the CPU block. I don't know what on earth I was smoking while I was building this, but it was probably something really good. So not only am I gonna build myself a brand new PC, but I'm also gonna redeem myself and my reputation. I am not gonna put this out until it is completely done and it comes out exactly the way that I want it. Uh, this video is gonna have a three part series. Part one is gonna be putting out all the parts together and testing all the components, making sure everything's working. Part two will be the actual build process and the modding. And then the finale will be basically benchmarking, overclocking, and thermals. I'm gonna focus one video just on all of that. So yeah, with that said, let's go over some parts. So the biggest change is the case. This is the pay-in. It's an open-air mid-tower case from Magitech and I actually did a water cooling tutorial on it and I fell in love with it. I guess you can say it was love at first sight. I'm gonna throw in two RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition and this is gonna replace both of the 1080 Ti's from my current build. I eventually want a game in 4K or I guess 3K since I'm using an ultra wide, but I do want max out settings, I want smooth gameplay, as much frames as I can squeeze out of these bad boys. And I know it's overkill guys, believe me, but it is my personal build, so we gotta stick with the overkill theme. So the cooler we're gonna be using temporarily to cool the CPU, just to make sure all the parts are functioning, is the Corsair H159i RGB Platinum. We are gonna be using the same CPU from my current PC, the 7980XC, it's an 18 core processor, and it's deleted by Steven from Gamers Nexus. But just for this video, we are going with, uh, I don't even know what CPU is in here actually, let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is the i9-7900X. We're gonna be using this temporarily just to make sure all the parts are working. Uh, I'm not quite ready to bring over the CPU just yet because I am still using that PC for gaming and editing. So until all the parts are here and ready to go, that is when I'll be doing the transplant. In fact, the only parts I'm not changing are the CPU and the storage. I'm gonna bring over both of my M.2 SSDs, but check this out guys, I'm gonna be adding this beast. This here is a 960 gigabyte Intel Optane SSD, the 905P series, and this thing has incredible read and write speeds. 2700 megabytes read and 2200 write. I'm definitely switching my operating system on here, along with my video editing software and any other games that I'm playing a lot of, which is currently Resident Evil 2, Darksiders 3, and Black Ops 4. But yeah, very excited to put this in the build. I'm gonna paint this white, obviously, so it matches the theme. My other two M.2 SSDs are gonna be used mainly for storage. I'm also upgrading the RAM from 32 gigs at 3200 megahertz to 64 gigs at 3600 megahertz of the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pros. Since this is a super high-end water-cooled build with heavy overclocking emphasis on heavy overclocking, there is only one board that can get the job done. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing you to 
the ASUS ROG Rampage 6 Apex. The purpose of the Apex motherboard is actually to break performance records, as they say. It has two 8-pin APC connectors, which will aid in a very stable overclock. We got four separated DIMM slots and four PCIe times 16 slots with lots of connectivity. We got wireless AC, USB Type-C, and a dual DIMM.2 socket for my M.2 SSD. This is going to be a power-hungry system, especially since we're going to be pushing both GPUs and the CPU to its limit, so I have to give it enough power. Hence why I picked up the AX 1600i from Corsair. But yeah guys, these are pretty much all the parts I'm going to be using inside my new PC, minus the water cooling parts, which will arrive before episode 2. I'm very excited to finally build myself a new PC. If you guys are excited as well, make sure to drop a like, and I'm going to shut up for the rest of the video and let you guys enjoy this montage. Finally done, ladies and gentlemen. Big Red is alive and kicking. Good news is that all the parts are functioning perfectly. The bad news, however, is that we came across a few snags, which is okay. That's the point of this video. Not only testing the parts out, but also making sure that we're not gonna run into any problems on the actual build itself. So the first mistake was actually a very new mistake of mine. I miscounted the spacing for the PCI slots. I picked up a three slot NVMe link when in reality I needed a two slot. So I went back on the website and I ordered that. So that is on the way. So the second issue has to do with the expansion kit. So normally this case only supports up to a 360 millimeter radiator, which fits on this side. I just put three fans here just to showcase where the other radiator would go, but uh, doesn't support any other radiators unless you guys buy the optional expansion kit, which sits on the top over here. And Ragitech actually was kind enough to send that to me. So the kit comes with three aluminum bars that mount on the top of the case, giving you mounting options to add another 360 millimeter or smaller radiator. And then you put this giant piece of tempered glass on top and screw it. Well, if you guys pay attention over here, you can see that it covers the USB ports and the power button. So right now, I don't have an easy way of turning on the system. The only option I have right now is right on the motherboard itself. So I have to reach my hand inside and click on the power button. Right now, it's not really a big deal because I can reach it easily. But once the PC is done with all the tubing, it's going to get kind of annoying constantly reaching in there and switching the PC on. So I had to find an alternate solution. So I went on Amazon and I bought this remote so that I can turn the PC on wirelessly. The other issue still remains. I can't access the USB ports on the top, which isn't a big deal for me. I don't really use the USB ports on the front or the top of the case anyways. What I usually do is I use a USB hub. So I plug it in the back and then I route it underneath my desk for convenience. So that is not a big deal for me. I gotta say, I do love the white extension cables that I got from Corsair. I personally think it's gonna blend beautifully with the build once everything is painted white. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, I don't really like how the PCI cables are kind of going down and to the side. So what I'm gonna do is drill a hole right underneath the motherboard so that I can run the GPU cables straight down. It's gonna look way cleaner that way. And of course, custom cables are on the way as well. 
But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. I really love how the case turned out with the expansion kit. I think the build is gonna be pretty damn sick once it's all done. Again, I could be biased, but uh, it's gonna be, like I said, guys, the best build on the channel thus far. It is my own PC after all. Uh, so that's why you guys have to subscribe with notifications because part two is going to be an awesome video. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to toss a like. And if you guys didn't enjoy the video, feel free to dislike as well. If you guys have any recommendations or any feedback on this case or the build itself, please let me know in the comment section. I will be reading them. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I'll drop a link to all the parts mentioned below if you guys want to check them out. I love your beautiful faces and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right.